Hi everybody. Welcome back to Jenkins Boat Works. I am Chuck Jenkins. Well, we got another video today as we continue to work on the Freedom 17. Uh, we start working on putting the gunnels on. So uh, this is kind of fun work. Got to do a little math, got to figure out some angles and that sort of thing. Uh, nothing terribly complicated and uh, lucky for you all that are watching, no sanding this time. <laughs> Um, got a new little shop dog. We'll introduce him and uh, just get some boat building done. If you're new to the channel, uh, welcome. Would you consider subscribing? We got a lot on the channel, a lot of different boat projects. You can see the kayak over here. We did this last year. Dig into the channel, see what else you like or what else you find. Uh, if you uh, Touch the little bell down there, you can get notifications for other upcoming videos. We're going to get into a lot more boat work as winter comes on. Big snowstorm predicted for this weekend. All right, Happy New Year. Let's jump in and see how we continue working on this canoe. Got a new shop dog. Hello. Hi. Little brown dog. Aren't you something? Hey, he wants to chew on everything he can find. Hello. <laughs> you got sawdust on your face. Hey, come here. <laughs> A little spaz. Uh oh, hello. Hi. Hello, little brown dog. Oh, that's good. So I've been down to Metro Hardwoods down in Independence, Missouri and picked up a nice piece of cherry. It's a uh, half inch thick, about 10 feet long. And I've ripped off several pieces off of here to make my uh, rails or gunnels on the canoe. So uh, since it's a 18 foot, I need about 18 feet length, so I've got, uh, a number of pieces cut up here and what I'm doing now is I'm setting up my jig here so that I can miter these cut them off so that I can scarf them together now I've already done these and these are for the outside and these are 3 8 thick by half inch and um, so I've got my cuts already made there where I'm going to glue those up these are the off cuts from it. So you can see how it fits together. See, that's two pieces. So we got a real nice, nice cut on these. Now the other pieces for the in whale are, are here. And these are quarter inch thick instead of three eighths. So they're not fitting in my little cutting jig very good. And I'm having to cram little sticks and a, a spreader and that sort of thing in there. We'll set the camera up so you can watch me cut it. So this is my jig that I'd made. And I made this some time ago. It's just a little piece of plywood on the bottom and a couple of one by two here. And then I cut a diagonal in there that my saw can fit in. I just basically have made a little miter box. And uh, this was designed so that I could put two quarter inch thick strips in here and then saw them at the same time so that you'd have an exact cut. And what I'm finding out with, with these pieces is they're just a little bit bigger than a quarter inch. And so the problem with that then is that I can't get two in there at once. 
So I'm gonna have to do them one at a time, but I don't want my saw flipping around. So I've just got some, uh, uh, I, this is actually a little mahogany stir stick I cut a long time ago. Um, I got a couple of stir sticks that came with my measuring cups. Put that mahogany in there. That holds that pretty good. I'm gonna move this down so I don't get the saw in the way of the, I really would like it if I could get that just a little bit tighter in there. Let's see if I can cram this stir stick in there. There we go. That's not going anywhere. All right. Now I just got this little Japanese pull saw. Fits in there like that, and I'm right on top of the end of that strip. And there we go. So I've got a, a pretty good surface area that I'll be able to put my epoxy on and, and glue these up. I have to do about four more of these. Let's see, three more. All right, so we're making the, the scuppers for the end wells. Um, I'm cutting these off at four and a half inches. And I've got measurement right here on the saw, so it makes it really easy. Just put it right on there at four and a half, and let her rip. I've had these outwells on here um, for a couple of weeks, just clamped down. This is cherry. It's a half inch um, this way and a quarter inch thick. And now what I'm doing on the other side is you can see those little four and a half inch mahogany pieces that we cut. And then I've got an inch and a half space, four and a half inch uh, piece in there. And, and so we're creating scuppers. 
couple of things to consider with this is that the seats uh, and the thwart in the middle will hang off of these uh, rails. So part of what I had to do is figure out how far back do I want the seats. Part of what I have to remember is that this canoe is asymmetrical. It has a much finer entry than exit, meaning that forward it's narrower than it is in the back. It's just kind of fatter in the back toward the end. So I thought about how long my legs are and decided that I'm gonna put these seats in about 40 inches back from the bulkhead. And I've just got a piece of wood set here to where I think that's where I want the front of the seat to be. There's a lot of consideration with this because for stability, I would rather have the seats back enough to where weight distribution uh, helps with the stability of the canoe. We'll also probably hang the seats as low as we can in here but to still be able to bend your knees and sit comfortably in here. Part of the reason I have to figure this out now, or at least get a good idea on it, is that I've got to have enough structure in that rail to hold the seats. We basically run bolts through there and hang the seats on bolts. So you can see I've got a real long piece, it's about 15 inches over here, and there's no scupper. So, and then I come back to an inch and a half gap and my four and a half inch pieces inside there. If you look at this thing, you're going to be able to see that there's quite a bit of sweep down toward the, the beam or the middle of the boat and then going back up. And this boat's got some rocker, so in other words, the ends come up. I thought about gluing these little pieces on to the end well over on the bench over here. But I think I'm going to glue them up as they sit. I'm just going to use some tight bond three and go in there and glue these little pieces to the in whale rail. Something else I did is I mitered these ends so they match up with the bulkhead. I got a little A on there for aft. But I'm afraid if I glue it up on the bench that I may not be able to bend it back the way it needs to go to fit in the boat. You might be able to, but I just don't want to chance it. And I took a lot of time to fit these pieces in here so that our gaps look right. Something else I'm doing, the, the out well and the in well are both cherry, but these pieces in the middle are mahogany. Um, so, and you may remember we've got some other, well, you can see those mahogany strips over there. So it should give it a nice accent. I think it's going to look good. So I'm going to glue those pieces on and we're going to use bronze screws to affix all this. And I'm not going to I'm not going to glue these rails to the boat. I'm only going to screw them in because if you ever would need to refinish them or uh, fix one. It's a lot easier if it's not epoxied to the boat. So we'll use some bronze screws and uh, attach the whole thing once we, get, once we get these dudes glued in here. So basically I'm just gonna be taking these clamps off, pulling that out, gluing in here, and then we'll just do it for each one until we get them all glued in. I wanted to mention something about some uh, product. Um, Fairwind is a, a supplier for like bronze screws and bolts and that sort of thing. Uh, when I had put uh, screws in the first canoe, well, you can see it back there, um, on those rails, I went to the hardware store and, and bought some brass screws, but um, the brass had a tendency to uh, break off when you're screwing in there, and then once you break a screw off, you got big troubles. Uh, and at the time, that was one of the first boats I built, and I just didn't know any better. 
that I could get bronze and that it would be uh, significantly stronger. And so anyway, I ordered these last week and they came in the mail pretty quickly. And I got uh, number eight by one and a quarter and uh, number eight by one inch. And this is just a, just a plug for a, for a fellow that's, that's doing this and, and I, he's not compensated for this. I just, uh, it's a good product. So you can see these bronze screws and they hold up real well to, uh, to weather and water and won't uh, degrade inside the wood like, like a lot of times a stainless steel screw will. Uh, they cost a little bit, uh, but uh, it's just real high quality stuff. And if you buy a box of 100 like this, you get a break on the, on the price on it. So anyway, if you're looking for some bronze screws, uh, look up Fairwinds. They're, they're on the internet. You can, they got a website. You just go there and order and, and uh, just, just a really nice product and, and a good guy to work with. I couldn't get him to hold still earlier. Yeah to get a picture. Now he's wiped out and fell asleep. Man, when he's done, he's done. He just drops. Oh my. He's nine weeks old, little golden retriever, little brown dog. There's the next one. If you can see that pencil mark inside there, right there, go in there, put that in there. Boy, some of these are tighter than others. Make sure we're flush and pull the next one. No, that one dropped in. Okay, try to wipe these glue marks off of here. one-inch bronze screws. I had used brass on a previous canoe, but they're so soft that they'll break off. We used so much bronze when we were building the Haven sailboat. That's nice. So we got the starboard rail on. Looks good. We got the other one clamped up. We have to start putting that on. If you like the video, remember to like and subscribe. We'll see you next time.